come up in your vocabulary in a week like this? Not once. Yeah. Yeah. I think we talked about that earlier in the week. Uh, Are you gonna ask me original questions? I, I don't remember. Just the recycle. Okay, I, no. I, I actually have two. <laughs> okay, get okay. your next one. First of all, I saw Nick Saban doing a commercial for Aflac on TV. How come you don't have any? <laughs> yeah, I think he's in a different league than I yeah. am. Yeah. And then, can you settle a debate between Savon and Andre Bocelli? Uh Andre says he's faster. Savon says yeah, he's faster. Yeah, that would be a good one. I'd like to yeah. see that race. I don't know who is. Both those guys can go pretty good. Um, I don't know when 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 Bocelli opens up, he, yeah. he can stretch it pretty good. I think uh, maybe just acceleration right now. Maybe the other guy. <laughs> yeah. The the two hires you announced this week. Can you kind of go into detail about you know? What um. Yeah. 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 What the roles are. As well? Yeah. So Cornelius is going to help us with recruiting. Um, kind of replacing uh, you know Aaron Brooks, who's been with us for quite a while. And then John Team, who's awesome. We're just getting him back as a program intern. He's going to help us in all different phases, you know, with connection with our guys, some recruiting stuff, um, sitting in some, some football meetings, those type of things. We've always known he was going to be a coach. And uh, so he uh, made a decision that his playing days are over. It's awesome to get him back here. On mm -hmm. average, how many ex-players do you think come back to you at one point looking to get into this profession? Yeah. Do you ever try and talk them out of it? <laughs> well... I think what's nice is um, sometimes if they have some space in between, uh, you know, playing and coaching. Some guys have known for a long time, and that's good. And other guys are still figuring out. But I think you know, like anything, I mean, this you got to really, really want to do this. This is not a, you know, this is an extreme lifestyle. Is really what it is. And so you want them to make sure that they know that. Uh, and then once they do that. You know, you, you really like having guys around you that kind of know know your way. And, and, and then the one thing that's different about that, too, is they know it from a player side. They don't see the inner workings of what this thing all looks like. And so I think it's an awesome perspective for them to come back and then really see what all the other coaches are doing. Because what uh, you said extreme lifestyle. Yeah. Now, it may seem matter of fact to you, but outside of maybe the time yeah. that's involved, what, what makes it extreme? Um, first and foremost, the time. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, when you, you factor in all the things that are going on here with, you know, not, not just football, but, but then let's start with recruiting because that might be more time than football, in college football. Then you got academics, then you got parents, you got all kinds of stuff, and you got these young guys that are developing that we're so involved with their lives. So the time factor <coughs> is, is humongous. And then you couple that with the intensity of this job that we all know, uh, things happen rapidly. And this isn't like you're moving to Seattle and staying for 30 years and, you know, if you're in the coaching business. So, they, you know, you gotta figure all those things out. And it's, a, it's extreme and it's intense. Chris, you're seeing a, a Cal defense that brings back their entire starting nickel secondary from, from last year. What, what makes this secondary specifically on their defense so good? Well, I mean, I think you gotta start with good players. You know, you can have all the experience you want, but We've been around that before, but they've had good young players. These guys have played for a while. They're talented guys, athletic. And now they've been coached by the same crew for was this year three now. And that makes that makes a, a big difference. And, um, you know, you couple that w w with their front seven. That's a good combination. Everybody wants to talk about their secondary, which they are good. But the front seven, like you're not holding that ball against those guys at all. And... Um, so it's a nice combination. They're, they're all like redshirt seniors, redshirt juniors. It's kind of what you would like your roster to look like. Chris, can you also talk a little bit about the difference of Bo Baldwin? I think you mentioned Monday when he yeah. moved to quarterbacks coach. Yeah. Now, what the differences might be between him and Tui, and have that, has that already shown up on tape? Yeah, I, I would have no idea about that, you know, in terms of position. I, I, I know most of the time the coordinator's coaching the quarterback. Um, that's, that's just kind of – standard practice but it doesn't mean that um that's how everybody does it i know there's you know there's been a lot of guys that coach the tight ends i mean i do think that tight end position is so involved with everything that it makes sense mm -hmm. that sometimes those guys are tight end you know coaches as well so i think it's whatever you know the staff fit is and playing the guy's strengths and and all those type of things so um you know we've got a lot of respect for for Bo and all those guys you know we we know these guys real well, so we, we, we got a lot of respect for them as coaches. What was your evaluation of the special teams last week in terms of coverage units, returns, all that kind of yeah. stuff? Yeah, I thought it was a solid start. Um, I thought it was a solid start. Um, 
but I do think that Cal is really good on special teams as well. I do. I mean, it's um, – so I'm anxious to, to see what we got this week. You know, Jacob uh, said last week there were some plays he would have wanted to have back. Yeah. As most quarterbacks do in a game. But the next kind of step for him just on the – Natural progression. What does that look like to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's you know things are going to happen a, a little bit faster, mm -hmm. a, a little bit more physical. Um, there's probably a little more defense coming at him, you know, all those things, and um, so this will this will be a good challenge. How often do you call him skinny? By the way, probably all the time, except for when I'm trying to talk to you guys on this thing. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a long time. For a long time, I've called him that. So, but he's not getting so skinny anymore. But it's just stuck. <laughs> When you look at a, a guy like Mateo, and, and I know you guys are fond of saying that once a guy plays a little bit, he's he's a veteran now. He's not yeah. just a first guy. But does he look even different this week coming in and, and doing some different things? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, we played so many young guys that I think all those guys, you know, are a little bit different. It's like, oh, okay, it's just football, you know, and, and I can do this. So um, I think that's good for, you know, everybody. That's that first game, kind of jitters type things. And, and some of these guys haven't played in college football games, Mateo being one of them. Has that been pretty typical for you? Would you have liked to have played that many guys in a, in a first game off? Because I think you played like 20 guys. Yeah, we, we'd like to play that many guys in every game, you know, if we really could. I mean, sometimes the game doesn't allow that. But, I mean, th this is a development game. You know, college football is, is development 101. I mean... We, we got the guys we got, and you know we know the roster changes with injuries and that things as the season goes on, and so we, we got to have a lot of guys ready that we're not talking about right now that we'll you know have to be talking about here in a handful of weeks. Do you have anything on Nick Harris at all? Week to week. Mm -hmm. Good question. <laughs> Just a couple more guys. You got a mole in the Garbers family. <laughs> <laughs> Help you out with some intel. I don't, I don't know what you're talking okay. about. Next question. <laughs> there, I can't go there. I know you can't, but what do you make of Chase and, and just yeah. the, the difference between the guy you saw a year ago yeah. and maybe the guy you'll see on yeah. Saturday? I, you know, one, you, you never like going against those athletic quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And so we had one week one and we have one week two. And that's, you know, we don't necessarily start with that. But you can cover everything just right, and then all of a sudden those guys, they hurt you when they take off. And he's really, really good at that. He's, he's a fast runner. He's a physical player. That's part of his game. Um, but then, you, you know, again, this is probably year three for him in that, that system as well. Mm -hmm. And that just that makes all the difference. And, you know, they have a chance to really analyze what they think are going to be their strengths, and you change things, and you set a new mentality. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I think this is um, – you know, I think this is different certainly than it was last year. And you've gone out of your way to talk about the crowd, how important yeah. they are, obviously. Um, the louder they are when the opposing team is on offense, the less your defense can <laughs> communicate. How much do you have to prepare for even your own crowd during a week like this? Every week. Yeah. And we hope we really have to make that a concern. It will be on the defensive side. But it was awesome because the crowd was awesome right from snap one last week. Mm -hmm. The first play, they jumped off sides. And so that's, that makes a big difference, you know, third downs in the red zone. And just as the game goes on, and this, there's no better place, you know. And I know it's a comfort zone when school starts and we get all the students back, but we don't have them right now. So Husky Nation, let's go. It's with, with no school, that's and it's going from noon to 7.30, does that, do you have to adjust your mechanics and how you? No, nah, we, kind of, we try to stay in our routine. This will kind of be our routine even when, when, when they get into school. So we don't, we don't like to ju uh, juggle that a whole lot. And, we're going to be used to night games, you know, and that's just, you know, on Saturday we hang out in the hotel longer, but everything else stays the same. All right.